One of the Office of the Auditor General's primary goals is to build and maintain positive working relationships with the public servants of this province. Publishing the summary report, Winter 2014, recognizes some of the good work done in government which may not otherwise be shared in a public realm. It also shares findings or recommendations where appropriate on our odd project that may not have resulted in a typical audit report. In this summary report, we share the most important findings or recommendations from two projects. The first project pertains to Health Shared Services BC, and the second project examines the K-12 funding allocation model. As the nonpartisan independent auditor of the Legislative Assembly, the Auditor General audits the government reporting entity. This consists of ministries, crown corporations, and other government organizations such as universities, colleges, school districts, health authorities, and similar organizations that are controlled by or accountable to the provincial government. The Office of the Auditor General serves the people of British Columbia and their elected representatives by conducting independent audits and advising on how well government is managing its responsibilities and resources. Under the Auditor General Act, the Auditor General conducts and reports on both financial audits and performance or value for money audits. Let's begin with Health Shared Services BC. In February 2009, Health Shared Services BC or HSSBC was created to centralize the province's health authorities non-clinical services such as supply chain management and employee finance and technology services. As identified in HSSBC's mandate, the goal of this integration was to create enhanced value to the healthcare system through increased process efficiency, standardization, capital avoidance, and leveraging of buying power. A key element in creating enhanced value is HSSBC's ability to provide cost savings through its control and management of contracts, especially those relating to the supply chain function. The supply chain function is responsible for purchasing, inventory, warehousing, and delivery of healthcare supplies, and accounts for over $1.9 billion in expenses annually. According to HSSBC, the projected procurement savings due to supply chain contracts from February 2009 to March 2013 is approximately $230 million. HSSBC uses this publicly reported information as a performance metric to demonstrate that it is meeting its goal to provide enhanced value to the healthcare system. We started planning an audit to determine if HSSBC's publicly reported projected procurement savings were reasonable and a reliable indicator of HSSBC meeting its goal to provide enhanced value to the healthcare system. However, we did not follow through with this audit proposal. Given the complexity and limitations of the process and systems used by HSSBC to calculate the projected procurement savings, we determined that conducting an audit of the reported savings would be too costly and not an efficient and effective use of our limited resources. Also, the projected procurement savings reported by HSSBC is an approximation and not a precise figure. Specific challenges and limitations of HSSBC which impacted our ability to conduct an audit included baseline measurements that have not been validated regarding cost savings for procurement. This is because of the time-consuming process required to extract and normalize data for the calculation from several different data management systems used by the health authorities. We estimated that it could take several months to extract data for a single product. As well, lack of universal coding for products entered into the systems so the same product can have several different codes and descriptions. Lastly, extensive reliance on the judgment and experience of HSSBC staff who evaluate data used in the calculations for validity and completeness. Reliance by our office on HSSBC staff would threaten the independence of our audit which must remain impartial and unbiased. We are concerned that these limitations do not enable HSSBC and the health authorities to assess whether value for money is being achieved from the contracts and the overall shared services arrangement. As such, we made the following recommendations. One, that Health Shared Services BC enhance its public disclosure of projected procurement savings by clearly indicating that the savings number is an approximation, including details about its calculation methodology, and identifying the limitations of reliance on this approximation as a performance metric. 
Two, that the Provincial Health Services Authority work together with Health Shared Services BC to address the limitations noted in this report, including the capture of baseline information on a go-forward basis for contracts that have not already expired since the creation of Health Shared Services BC. Now, let's shift our attention to the K-12 funding allocation model, the second piece in this summary report. The K-12 education system receives around $5.3 billion annually in government funding, which represents approximately 15% of annual government expenditures. 638,835 children were enrolled in the system in 2012-13, 565,000 in the public school system, and 74,000 at 350 independent schools. Overall, annual funding for K-12 is determined by government. The allocation of operating grant funding to individual school districts is based on a funding allocation formula. School districts determine how to spend the operating funds allocated to them under this model. The funding allocation model is very detailed and takes into consideration a number of different factors, like student needs, enrollment trends, and geographic factors in arriving at how available amounts are to be allocated to individual school districts. The original purpose of this project was to develop an information piece to help legislators, the public, and other stakeholders better understand how the funding allocation model works. During detailed planning, we identified that the Ministry was already providing extensive disclosures and that with some minor changes and some minor new additional material, the Ministry would provide stakeholders with the information they need to fully understand the model. Based on planned enhancements described by the Ministry, we determined that it was not an appropriate use of our office's resources to complete the planned project as the proposed ministry adjustments would get to the same place that our office's expected information piece would have. Our key findings include the following. 1. Funding model information is publicly available. The ministry has extensive materials available on multiple websites. They are in the process of making a number of enhancements to how they present the information so stakeholders can better understand how the model works. 2. Total K-12 educational funding and the funding allocation model are different. Legislators determine total funding for the ministry and educational programs. The minister then determines how much of that will go to public school block operating grants. The ministry uses the funding allocation model to allocate this block operating amount to individual school districts. 3. Independent schools allocation is increasing. Independent schools receive ministry funding on a per-student basis based on either 35% or 50% of the per-student amount received by public schools in their area. Since 2001-2, funding for students in the public school system has increased while the number of students has decreased, resulting in an increase in per-student funding in the public school system. This, coupled with an increase in Students in the independent schools means that the independent schools are receiving an increasing amount of funds from the Ministry. In 2012-13, these totaled $293 million. And number four, funding model is not directly tied to costs. The model uses a number of factors to try to reflect the variables influencing the costs of providing K-12 education. These factors are not directly tied to costs. The actual costs incurred by each school district may be different from what the model anticipated. It is up to each school district and independent school to determine how to meet its expenditures within its allocated amounts. This concludes our summary of this report. To read this report and our other publications, or for more information about our office, please visit our website at www.bcauditor.com. The Office of the Auditor General encourages your feedback on this report as well as your suggestions for further audits. We look forward to hearing from you.